And yeah. The thing. <laughs> it's, it's nauseating to me. I just can't. I can't take it. Some more pictures. This is what I wanted to show you. Check out the neck. It's the easiest way to tell these soul scalp people now. Instead of looking for slits in their eyes. Because they can wear contacts to hide their eyes. Look at the necks. You just can't hide it. Check this picture out. If I can get over there. I don't know. If I can. There we go. Look at this neck. Look at this neck. Look at this neck. They're all... Look at the ridges and the lines. That's not human, folks. One of the biggest things about reptiles taking over human bodies is they have the these uh, weird bumps on their foreheads you can look for, which I don't see any in here. Obama usually has them. Uh, weird looking bumps on their foreheads or the obnoxious necks, the ridge lines because they're not human, they're reptile. And so they'll have these obnoxious ridges and lines. Sometimes on the sides of your, their faces, you can see uh, ridges and lines like Angelina Jolie, she got busted on that. Some pictures online of her with some really, really odd looking ridges on, the, on her ear, on the shape of her, on the side of her neck, head. You can also look for scrawny, skinny bony fingers and bony arms that was obvious in the Michael Jackson video I did and showed you about his long scrawny fingers his reptilian hands and you can't fault a lot of these people because they were swapped at birth they had no say in the matter they had no choice in the matter She has come out and she'll talk about Sasha Fierce, who is this uh, MPD, Dissociative Identity Disorder, alter that she has, named Sasha Fierce, who comes through her while she's performing and does the singing and dancing. If you saw that video of her at the basketball game where her programming just shut down. That was hilarious. She was like a robot sitting there with, Jay, with uh, Jay-Z. Different of hers. She kind of got the weird neck thing going here. All you have to do is Check out the necks, folks. They can't hide it. Frozen. This is her base back when she was on American Idol. Shortly after that. Remember that hairdo? Remember this one? Let me see if I can get... Remember that one? <laughs> she had this really crazy hairdo when she was on American Idol. She's a lot younger than two. I think she was like 19 or something. Check out these ridges. This scaly, gnarly stuff looking on her neck. The weird obnoxious neck and chest bone. There's no escaping that, folks. Yeah, I heard the story about Tom Cruise falling asleep in his bedroom. And his daughter walked in and saw him. And she ran out of the bed, out of the bedroom screaming her daddy was a monster. And she hasn't seen him since. And I heard on uh, TV the other day or somewhere they were not. It was I don't know why they were talking about him. They said that Tom Cruise had not seen his daughter in two years, and I think they were trying to blame it 
on Scientology. But the truth is she's scared to death of him because he's a reptilian. He's been replaced totally by a reptilian. And shape-shifted. What happens is when you go to sleep, you lose your human form. It's pretty, it, it takes them concentration and attention to keep human form. See the, see the neck? And he fell asleep and lost his human form and she saw him. So now she doesn't want a thing to do with him. She's scared to death of him. That's one of his clones, but look at... Even the clones have that weird necks. Even she has the weird necks. Probably a little reptilian child. Look at that neck, the ridges. You can't make this stuff up, folks. I've always loved to shapeshift and become different characters. It's part of my artwork. It's part of my music. At the beginning of my career, I have always loved to transform. I've always loved to shapeshift. And you, do you record while while the bus is moving, or does it have to come to a stop? Before yeah, well, you... sometimes they don't want to, and they're, they're you know, Gaga, we can't get you know the the frequency's weird, and you know it's sounding a little bit strange, and I'm like, if you don't get this right now, I swear to Lucifer, I'm gonna, you know, you know. I... Couple interesting things about this. She says, "I'll swear to Lucifer," and Jimmy Kimmel ask her if she has a kitchen on the bus <laughs> and i'm like if you don't get this right now i swear to lucifer i'm gonna you know i get a little bit mad do you have a kitchen on the bus you cook um, he just lets that go <laughs> every in the everyone in the audience is like she, she just say she swear to lucifer <laughs> and the other piece of this in terms of her saying she's shape-shifting which is just an interesting way an interesting way to talk about being playing different characters, we'll get more into that in a second, is that when she's on this show with Jimmy Kimmel, she's wearing the same headgear as the death character, the goddess of death character in the most recent uh, Thor Ragnarok movie. I've always loved to shapeshift and become different characters. It's part of my artwork. It's part of my music. And what was so wonderful about this experience with Bradley and why he's such an incredible director is that he really wanted to see me with nothing. And I remember very, very well, I walked down the stairs from my house before we filmed the screen test for A Star Is Born, and he had a makeup wipe in his hand, and he put his hand on my face, and he went like this, and there was makeup. We had put just a little bit, and he said, he said, I want no makeup on your face. Here's the thing. There's two ways to, there's two narratives here. One, she was just using the word shapeshift as a way to morph into different characters. But I think even that is a sense of shapeshifting. Acting and putting on a performance and playing a character. And she said in her music as well. She played all these various characters in her music. Various types of manifestations of perhaps demonic energy and all these things which is asked of people in Hollywood, manifestation of darkness. And so that is, in a sense, shape-shifting as well, where there's some sort of energetic being coming over you. And it seems that Lady Gaga is trying to reinvent herself. She's talked about this, and she's not embracing some of the darkness she embraced early on in her career. And I've talked about everybody can redeem themselves, and again, she's admitting to this in this interview where she's saying that the actor, director, Bradley Cooper, wanted just her. No makeup, no fake, you know, no fake character, just being her genuine self, right? <laughs> Madonna. I've talked about her before in one of my other videos on vampires. She's actually a bride of Lucifer. She's married him. She's not just a vampire, but a recruiter for the Illuminati. She's in the sisterhood. And her service to Satan is doing public rituals and public initiations through her concerts. 
And if you noticed, I spent a lot of time on TV trying to prop up with Beyonce. They're trying to elevate her to a status so that it, when it's Madonna's time to go, they can prop up Beyonce to take her place. But Beyonce's nauseating. I like Beyonce as a person. She seems like a nice girl. But the media just smothers you with Beyonce material. With the Kardashians, it's just nauseating. You can't take it. We live in Beyonce's world now. They use them to prop them up to bait everybody else. Look what we have. We have fame. We have fortune. We're celebrities. We're stars. Join the Illuminati. But as Lucifer says, someone's always buying it. No matter how much garbage they push and they sell, someone's always buying it. have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order a world where the rule of law not the law of the jungle governs the conduct of nations when we are successful and we will be we have a real chance at this new world order an order in which a credible united nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision the UN's founder. like Barbara Mark Shepard, one of the wealthiest women in the world. She ran for the uh, Democrat nomination for the vice president in 1984. And you read her book, The Revelation, the book of co-creation. She talks about the necessity of killing a quarter of the population of the world, those who will not evolve to a higher level of consciousness. And as she says in her book, she said, that's not your job to do the killing. That's ours, for we are the riders who pay a horse death referring to Revelation 6-8. David Foreman, uh, who was one of the founders of Earth First, uh, financed by the great foundations and by people of great wealth, talked about getting the world population down to 100 million. All they need is enough people to serve them uh, and their desires. These are the elitists. They have a different worldview. You really want to have them controlling your destiny and the destiny of your family. One is maintained of the world population at 500 million in constant balance of nature, which doesn't sound too bad until you realize that we've got over 6 billion people in the world. And if we're going to maintain the world population at 500 million in constant balance of nature, we're going to have to kill off about 90% or more of the world's population. Today's population is 6 billion. They want to maintain humanity under one half billion. Looks like a lot of people are going to die for their plan to work, which is, by the way, the plan. The Jacques Cousteau said we'd have to eliminate 350,000 people a day. A third of a million people a day would have to be eliminated to save Mother Earth. Now, Bill Clinton said we need to reduce the population of the Earth to one billion. There are a lot of folks who would like to reduce the population of the Earth. A magazine called The Omega Letter says that there is only one obstacle to world unity, Christianity. It goes on to say that Christianity claims supernatural knowledge and divine revelation and therefore should not be tolerated. Gus Hall, the former leader of the Communist Party in America said, I dream of a time when the last congressman is strangled to death on the guts of the last preacher. And since the